Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good night, depending on which part you are watching this video from. Now, I'm introducing myself, I'm Black Bright. I hail from the UK and I am welcoming you to my channel if it's the first time. Returning subscribers, thank you, welcome again. And new subscribers, thank you for joining me on my platform. Um, I haven't done a daily roundup for the last couple of days, so I decided to do a weekend roundup, which will kind of encompass most of what has been happening over the last couple of days. A lot of it is much of the same, same old, same old, a lot of repetition, just said in a different way, clarified in a different way. So I'm just going to run through it. I'm hoping that this video won't take too long, but as you know, sometimes I go on a rampage and digress. And sometimes it does turn out being a bit long. But new subscribers or the first time you're passing through, please click the like or the down, thumbs down or share and subscribe. Um, like I've been saying recently, it's, it's very difficult for YouTube to keep up with. I know they have algorithms and stuff. But it's very um, difficult for now for subscribers to be notified of my channels and I've found out from quite a few of my subscribers some of whom I know personally of course they haven't been receiving um, notifications of my um, of my videos they've had to literally go looking for them so I am aware that this is happening and yes I just wanted to make you aware that it's happening just in case you think oh she ain't done nothing for a while remember it's my habit. I, 99% of the time, I do at least something every day. So if you haven't seen something for one day, you know, uh-oh, something is awry, mm. okay? Or something is amiss. Anyway, let's first start with employment checks that to bear Trump's signature. Apparently, he wants his signature and all the um, checks that are supposed to be going out to rescue the economy. So all of these um, checks that employees or the unemployed are supposed to be getting that are supposed to lift them out of poverty for a little while. He wants his signature on it. He can't let um, 3.3 billion or however much it is go out there without his signature. This is going to delay it by about two more days, apparently, but he must have his signature on it. At first, I thought he was going to sit there looking at it to see if all the names were American names and then discard the ones that weren't. But I think because normally it's the disbursements officer who signs off the check. So I cannot understand why Trump would want that responsibility. He, he needs more substantive work to do. To me, that's administrative work. That is not the work of a prime minister. It, I'm not a prime minister, a president. It's just not the work for him. Um, like I said, I know it's probably a stamp, but it's that part of control. He wants to see where the money is going, who it's going to. And while you can't tell who the money is going to, you can tell by the names the kind of people it's going to without being too facetious. But that's the way they did the hostile environment in the UK. A lot of the landlords were told that if somebody's got a strange name, they should alert um, the authorities to see whether or not they were legally in the country. And it could be the same principle in the United States of America. You know, we don't know. We don't know the logic behind wanting your signature on all these checks. It doesn't make any sense unless it's to monitor, unless it's to control what's going on. OK, so um, then we was they were talking, you know, he keeps repeating, you know, he's asked. What I don't understand about these reporters is that why do they ask Donald Trump the same question over and over again about how he was praising um, China with, about their transparency three months ago? And, you know, now, you know, what is his change and the delays? I mean, every single time it's the same question i get frustrated with them asking the same question so i can imagine donald trump would get frustrated in the same vein anyway he'll repeat about the um, how the chinese never paid anything for all the previous administrations and how he got 
them the 350 billion deal so that they're going to buy American produce and how they've got coughed up another 250 billion for small businesses and how they're going to pay millions on their on tariffs of Chinese goods. But, you know, when I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking, but America, you haven't got any economy. You know, your economy is going down the pan at the moment. You've got all these people unemployed. What will the Chinese be buying? How can you commit the Chinese to an econ economy that effectively doesn't exist? So he's saying that if they don't comply, then he, there's going to be some serious alternatives. I'm not quite sure what that is. It sounds like a veiled threat, but he is saying they have to um, have some alternatives. But my point is, is that way of um, Donald Trump um, trying to get China to lift them up through this crisis, you know, help, you know, help buoy them, so to speak. I'm not quite sure how it can work while the global economy is in turmoil, unless they believe or unless they know that China has got stacks and stacks and stacks of money somewhere, that a couple of billion here and there isn't going to make a dent in their pocket. In that case, well, it's all well and good. I mean, China must know what they're signing up for, so let's not worry about that. Testing kits, whose responsibility are they? Now, that's another question they keep putting to Donald Trump in his press conferences. Oh, why was there a delay in February? Why didn't you get testing kits out in February? And all he'll respond is, it's not the federal government's responsibility. It's the um, governor's responsibility. But then I'm thinking to myself, so how come in the UK... It's the UK government's responsibility. I mean, the UK spent 3.5 million on hundreds of thousands of test kits, albeit we can't use them yet, albeit they're not ready yet, albeit they haven't been tested yet. And I just, you know, a part of me, the cynical part of me says, you know, it's just, a, just is this just a way to delay what's going on? I mean, there's been such a large investment put into this lockdown, put into this coronavirus pandemic, do they really want it to end so quickly? So on the one hand, they're saying, oh, yes, we've got all of these test kits. I think Ocado um, spent 3.5 million on test kits at there and private doctors and private GP services are um, paying £250 a go for the rich people, for a testing kit. So they're using it. The rich are using it and being tested, and so they know what their position is. But as usual, the small people who are dependent on the authority of a higher source has to sit down and wait. And that is how we've been trained. If you notice, we've been trained to behave. We've been trained to conform. We're actually living in a state of fear to be honest, it's kind of a slow grooming, but we're such an obedient um, society in the UK. And I think half of that is the politeness, in quotes, of the UK in their instructions. And another part of it is just the culture. The culture is one of obedience. But what and you know it's almost it's all it almost seems that even the rebellious Jamaicans they were once rebellious even they have conformed because they've got into the British culture as well so everybody is acquiescing to this um, not that they can do anything about it but you just have to sit and wait for things like test kits to be told when to go out to be told when you can go back to work. You know, it's like having a big daddy and mummy over us telling us what we can do and when we can do it. And that's where we are now. So with the testing kits, we've got Donald Trump saying, oh, it's not the federal government. And yet in the UK, it is the federal government. So who is it? Is Donald Trump passing the buck and putting on the governors? Or is it really the governors? In which case... Um, who would it be in the UK? Maybe it's because we don't have governors in the UK. Maybe that's why it doesn't apply in the UK. 
that makes sense. And in that case, it would be the UK government uh, producing the testing kits. Um, so Trump is emphatic that the governors are doing the testing. They're responsible for the testing, not the federal government. So the UK government has bought 3.5 million tests. I said Ocado had spent 3.5 million. I have the numbers in my head, but it's all wrong. So the truth of the matter is um, the UK government has bought 3.5 million tests, which reveal whether someone has had the virus and is therefore thought to have some immunity. Do you notice how carefully they use their words? Some. They're not giving the all clear. And is ordering millions more, it has, so, it has said. Um, as the Prime Minister admits that they need the certain they need to be certain the tests work before they could be made available. But the irony is, is that they need to make sure the tests work, but then they're thinking about using the vaccination as trials. So why is it um why can you use the te- why can't you use the tests as trials? But you can use vaccinations, which are much more dangerous, as trials. Does that make any sense to you? Um, Let me see. Millions of 15-minute home coronavirus tests are set to be available on the high street or for Amazon delivery to people self-isolating, according to the Public Health England, in a move that could restore many people's lives to a semblance of pre-lockdown normality. So all those people who've said they're off sick and they might have, they're having symptoms of the coronavirus, they're going to be tested. Uh, In the UK, Ocado food chain was paid 1.5 million for the testing kits with 40,000 already delivered and a further 60,000 to come. So if they're buying 3.5 million, 3.5 million tests, and it costs them 1.5 million in money, it's a bit expensive, isn't it? There has to be a cheaper way. The cheaper way is probably the vaccinations. <laughs> Let everybody drop dead from them while they're trialling them out. <laughs> I mean, really. You couldn't make it up, could you? They're really expensive. Maybe they are for the rich to buy. Because that is expensive. So anyway, the UK Ocado food chain has paid 1.5 million for the testing kits with 40,000 already delivered and a a further 60,000 to come. Ocado refused to state from which company they had bought the tests. Maybe that's why they don't want to use them. But I'm sure the government must know. Maybe they don't want to tell the media what company they book up the test from, but they have to tell the government. I hope they didn't get them from bloody China. Because I'm not convinced that China has actually um, solved their problem. They seem to have a resurgence of it again. So if the tests aren't working on them, how is it going to work over here? I, I, I don't know where they're getting these tests from, but I think it would put the public at rest if they knew, number one, where the tests were coming from, what's in them, what they're meant to do, and why the tests can't be used in the same vein. If you can use vaccinations which they're trying to rush through and as trials, I don't see why you can't use the tests. That's just my personal opinion. Um, while key workers have had to wait to be tested, private health firms have come under fire for selling thousands of test kits to wealthy buyers for up to £295 each. And that's just for a little prick in your finger. But I tell you, if they're rare, they're valuable. And if you've got the money, you'll pay it. But I wonder if it's open to anybody to pay £300. I'm sure there are people who might want to pay 300 It doesn't have to be the wealthy all the time. Suppose there's a regular John Joe that wants to pay £295. Would they be allowed to? Because remember, you know, people are going to start needing immunity certificates to get around. And if the wealthy can pay £295 for a test kit, they're in effect um, setting themselves up to get an immunity certificate 
also with an immunity certificate. Suppose the old bill knocks on your door and says, look, we, we believe that you've got the coronavirus. If you've got an immunity certificate, they can't do that. All you've got to do is show it to them. So that is like collateral. That is like gold. Those immunity certificates are going to be like gold. So I'm not surprised that they're going to be privileged to the rich first. So Public Health England said last week that mass home testing would be possible within days via a procedure that involves pricking the finger to produce a drop of blood, a bit like diabetics use to test their insulin levels, which, then, which is then analysed by a device. The test is being validated in Oxford to ensure that it works. So let's keep our fingers crossed that it works. It's talking about days. Let's hope it is days. The health body said the kits would soon be available on the high street or to order via Amazon's delivery mm. service. So, so they're charging us for them. <laughs> so all those little poor buggers who haven't had any work for a while and who are low on income, if they can't afford a test, they're screwed. Oh, I wonder how much they're selling them for. I hope it's not 295 quid. Furlough update according, okay, furlough update according to Martin Lewis. Um, originally, originally, the scheme only covered people who were on companies' payroll before the February the 28th, and the 28th of February was the deadline. This meant that many employees, though through no fault of their own, would not be able to benefit from the new system. However, the, the deadline has been extended. And the government has changed their cutoff date to March the 19th. So you've got like 20 days extra to play with. That may seem like a relatively small tweak, but the money-saving expert highlighted just how impactful the change will be. While a 20-day deadline shift doesn't sound much, the Treasury's extension of the furloughing cutoff date will see, according to the government, 200,000 more people eligible for support for the coronavirus job retention scheme. They really seem to be pushing that, don't they? Hmm. Anyway, another subject, the Coronas Vaccination Task Force. Ooh. So I was wondering if the UK could be delaying the use of the test kits because they have the Coronavirus Task Force up and running. It is a single goal to accelerate the development of a coronavirus vaccine. The unit aims to... And the thing is, is that it's kind of ironic because on the one hand, you've got people saying this coronavirus was patented in 2015. The vaccine is already out. And technically, they could actually do it now. So we don't understand what the delay is other than them trying to make out that the vaccine doesn't exist and then they need to make it exist. And this is why the thing is, it's all very kind of um, convoluted and complex because with my convoluted and complex mind, they've um, put the emergency measures in place for two years in the UK. The vaccine is supposed to take between um, 12 to 18 months to produce, even though Technically, some people say it's already out there. So that justifies the delay in the emergency powers being two years. So now they're talking about they want to rush it through. Let me read exactly what it says. Um, it has a single goal to accelerate the development of a coronavirus vaccine. We also know that, or oh, we've also been um, told that um, the vaccine is a trial. We don't know what state of the trial it's in, the first, second or third stage. But whichever stage it's in, it's not comfortable for those people who have to take it. So the unit claims to position the UK as leaders in clinical vaccine testing and manufacturing by backing Britain's most promising research in order to make a vaccine available to the public 
as quickly as possible. You see? And the thing is, is that when they're saying that, it's implying that, oh, yeah, they're doing their best to get it done as quickly as possible when rumours have it that it's already out there. And it just be a case of pulling it out, not unless they're trying to adjust it, adjust the vaccine that they already have to make sure it does what they want it to do. We don't know what they want it to do. We don't know what they want it to find. But we know that a lot of these vaccines, because they're man-made, they can be um, custom made. And so we don't know what's going in those vaccines. And that's what's causing some alarm for everybody. Um, so um, Alok Sharma said, oh, that's what he said. Um, well, he added that the task force will facilitate trials that are both rapid and well supervised. See, it's the trials. I wish they'd find another word instead of trials. I mean, I know that technically with every vaccination, you've got three sets of clinical trials. You've got the antibody testing, and then you've got this antigen testing, and then you've got another thing. You've got three types of trials. And the thing is, is that one of them is supposed to just test whether or not you've got antibodies. Another one's supposed to test if you've got pathogens, and another one's supposed to do something else. But the third one, is the one that they give to you and you're not quite sure of the outcome. And it's the one similar that killed so many people with HIV and SARS. And that is why I do not like the term trials because it's like they're trialing the vaccine and we are the scapegoats. And that's not a nice thing to do, is it? I don't think it's very nice. We're not little rats in the, you know, that you know that goes around in a cage that you test and experiment on. We're human, like just like the heads of government. They might not think we're human because a lot of us are considered undesirables. A lot of us are considered, you know, not worth the time, not worth spending money on. But regardless, from the top to the bottom, you cut us, we bleed red blood. So. They need to think about what they're doing and make sure it's morally just and morally right. So extension of the lockdown. The lockdown rules have been extended for a further three weeks. Um, it's supposed to be regularly reviewed. It's taking us up to about May the 7th. And supermarkets are also implementing their own ideas to keep customers safe, as we can see. I mean, Tesco had a Barney the other day because you've got a one-way system. I forget about the one-way system unless you're used to it. I mean, nobody had a go at me when I did it. And, you know, it wasn't until I reached the bottom I saw the arrow going up the other way. But, you know, apparently a fight nearly broke out in um, Tesco because one person was going down one way, another one person was going up the other way. And then, you know, they're talking about, you know, you're going up the wrong way up the one-way system. So I think there should be some leniency with regard to that. I mean, especially if there's not a lot of people in the shop and people need to have a little bit more tolerance. So anyway, pre previously, shoppers were only permitted to visit shops to buy essentials. But now the rules have been relaxed just a little bit, reports the Mirror. Shoppers are now also permitted to collect basic food items from friends, and can purchase tools and supplies for necessary home repairs. And I understand that B&Q is opening up in a lot of different areas. So for all you workmen who want your bits and pieces, you'll be able to get your essentials. Whereas you wouldn't have been able to get them before. Before you are just able to get stuff like fences and, you know, stuff like your plumbing and things right. like that. Anyway. That's all I've got to say for now. Have a wonderful weekend. You've only got tomorrow left and then it's all guns blazing next week. It's another week. It's been raining today. I'm sure for all those gardeners, they're happy for the bit of rain. So, yeah, let's hope the sunshine comes out tomorrow so we can relax in our gardens. And remember to keep safe. Remember to self-isolate. Remember to social distance. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.